This is Paul and Claire Hollis, Session 3, the Deliverance Session. This is probably the most exciting session of all because it's a time where the first two sessions lead up to this session. And this is a time when the people that you've been counseling with are going to be set free. And through the power of God, they will be free. But first, we want to explain to you some things that we do to prepare the room and to prepare the uh, place where by deliverance is done before the people actually come in. We recommend that you go prepared and be prayed up and even fast a day or two ahead of time if, if necessary. We do tell the people that's coming in for deliverance, it's good if they could fast for the day before they come in. And this basically just is a uh, indication that they're serious and that they really want God to do a work in their life. And by this little sacrifice, God always seems to honor that. When you come to the third session, deliverance session, we recommend that you wear casual clothes. Ladies, uh, be good to wear uh, slacks or jeans and no jewelry. And men, you dress casual as well. You need to pray over the room, uh, pray over the oil. We always have oil. We pray over the oil first, then we anoint the room, the chairs, the walls, and uh, we just apply the blood of Jesus upon the room whereby we'll be doing the ministry. We dispatch warring angels to come into the room and uh, to be there to help us oust out the demonic spirits as we call them out. Uh, we recommend that you have at least two or three people that would be doing a deliverance. Uh, one of those should be a male and uh, preferably three, but two will work as long as one is a male. We apply the blood of Jesus over every person that's going to be a ministering deliverance, over the, anybody else that could be in the building, the property, or any of their families, so that everyone is protected. And we command that all spirits cannot cross the bloodline, but they must go into dry, uninhabited places in Jesus' mighty name. We generally position four chairs facing each other in the center of the room and so that the person administering deliverance will be sitting directly across from the one that's going to receive the deliverance and the other two chairs of course are for other people that would be there to assist. We then invite the person to come in that we're going to be praying deliverance for. We want them to feel very comfortable and relaxed because at this point many times they're very nervous particularly the spirits that's inside of them. They always feel a real churning down in their uh, their belly area and therefore we uh, know that and we just want them to feel as comfortable as they possibly can. We ask them if they have completed their list and uh, gone through all the proclamations. That is a must before we get started and uh, they usually explain to us some of the areas uh, and relief that they received by, by going through the proclamations and so it's just a time of a little bit of visitation maybe three or four or five minutes before uh, we actually start into the deliverance. We then position the person in the chair, and uh, since I normally do the deliverance myself, I have the person I'm praying for sit directly across from me. And then my wife or some other person will sit on the other two chairs. The first thing that we ask the people is uh, about any major soul ties that we feel like we need to break as a group. We do know that they prayed for, uh, as they prayed for themselves and, and did the proclamations, they did break most all the um, ungodly soul ties during their proclamations. But because the anointing in the room, we, uh, we also break the, what we claim are the most powerful soul ties that would be between them and other people, for instance, between their father <clears throat> and their mother, their spouse, uh, maybe a previous spouse, their children. If they had any abortion, we, we ask them about that, and we need to break the soul tie between them and the aborted child, and also between them and the uh, child's father or mother, the other parent. And uh, also we uh, uh, any uh, incest or rape that has taken place or molestation, sexual molestation that had taken place with the people, we like to find the, uh, out the other person involved with that because those are major soul ties that need to be broken. If they had a foster parent or a adopted parent, we also would include them. Any brothers or sisters, we would include them. And we and also if they have been either to a hypnosis or been to a psychic, we try to identify that and break those soul ties because these are very important. These are all very powerful soul ties, ungodly soul ties that uh, we'd like to break as a group before we actually start the deliverance. 
now that we have the ungodly soul ties uh, individuals listed, then what we explain to them, let's pray for a little bit, and let's ask for the anointing of God to come into the room, and so that the Holy Spirit will give us direction as we pray for these people. Now we begin to pray as a group. We just hold hands, and as a group together we pray, and we ask the anointing of God to come upon us, and that the spirit of wisdom and discernment of spirits will come upon us, and the anointing will fall through us as we begin to pray for deliverance. After we pray for a while, we feel release in our spirit, and then we will then basically uh, uh, start the deliverance. When we start the deliverance, then I am sitting directly in front of the person that, that is receiving the deliverance. I ask them to take my two hands, and I do this for two reasons. Uh, one reason is because uh, the anointing will flow through a touch, and by having their hands, anointing will flow through me, through their hands, into them. Secondly, because by holding on their hands, sometimes if a person does have a violent nature or has a spirit of anger or rage, then by hanging on to their hands, you can usually uh, keep that person from hurting themselves or hurting you, yourself or someone else in the room. So I'll, I have the person look at me directly in the eyes. I look in their eyes. The eyes are the windows of the soul, and this is a very powerful way of doing deliverance. Now it's time to start the deliverance. The first thing I do is break the ungodly soul ties where I have asked them about their father and their mother previously. After the soul ties are broken, then I begin to just start right into the deliverance. The first thing I do is I cut off all communications between the spirits, and I come command that they cannot and they will not have any communication with each other. I put a Jesus bloodline around them, and I sever every root and every cord of every spirit that's in that body, and they are isolated, and that they will come forth when they call them forth because they have no legal right to be there, that these people have gone through all the proclamations of unforgiveness, every proclamation of renouncing anything they've done in the occult, every sexual sin has been confessed and has been forgiven, and every ungodly soul tie has been broken. And therefore, these spirits have no legal right to be in this body. And from this point on, I start calling out the spirits. I, first of all, I call out a spirit of haughtiness, and I go right through the list that we previously gave them in the first session. And that, that list has the, the major uh, strong man, the ruling spirit, with the other spirits under them. Now, what they are supposed to have done is circle the ruling spirits where they've had any manifestation or anything that they've noticed in their lifestyle up to that point. The Bible says that you must first bind the strong man, and then you spoil his house. So we, what we do is bind the strong man first. We bind him, we break his power, and we will even quote the scripture that when we bind him, his house is spoiled, and then we start calling out the strong man. Now, if a spirit will speak to you, we just ignore it because most of them are liars anyway, and we do not like to carry on a conversation with a demonic spirit. So first we start with the spirit of pride or the haughty spirit, and we do that because many times if a person has a spirit of pride or haughtiness, that could actually hinder a deliverance later on in the deliverance. So we call out that spirit first. Once we finish that grouping, then we start with the deaf and dumb spirit. And then we do that because many times there's people that will have a multi-personality, and we have had experiences in the past where we have called out uh, all the spirits but discovered that we were only dealing with a personality, and they may have had many personalities. Therefore, we will call out any personality that, that is in that person that is not the born-again personality or the God-given personality, and we will deal with that issue first. And then many times the Holy Spirit will actually give us a name of a personality. It could be a little boy personality, a little girl personality. But any type of personality that would be in that person, we call it out in Jesus' name. Once we finish that grouping, and then we call out the strong man of slumber. This spirit has infiltrated the minds of many people today, particularly the mind-binding spirits. And these spirits can hinder also a deliverance. So we call those out as quickly as possible. The next grouping has to do with familiar spirits. Now, as we call out familiar spirits, what we make sure that they understand, these spirits understand that we have broken ungodly soul ties between them and their ancestors, their parents and their parents' ancestors, and that any curse that's come down through the inherited bloodline that is broken, we break it in the name of Jesus. And we take, the, we take those curses and we reverse them right back to the demonic spirit that called them forth. And then we also break any curses that could have come from, upon them from a witch, a warlock, or a saintness, or any word spoken. We break every curse. 
And as you'll find it, usually a great manifestation when you call out these familiar spirits. The next grouping has to do with fear. fear. This strong man seems to plague almost every person that we minister to. Fear is a mean spirit. It opens up the door for all types of other spirits to come in, of insecurity, inadequacy, inferiority complex, nightmares, uh, tormenting spirits. All these spirits are under a ruling spirit of fear, and we just call them out one at a time. Now, also, uh, rejection comes under fear, but we usually wait and call out rejection after we have called out another strong man, which is the next one called heaviness. We are finding that rejection, because it's such of a deep-rooted spirit, usually has two strong men over it. One is fear, the other one is heaviness. And so after we call out the spirit of a strong man of heaviness, then we call out a spirit of rejection. And, I, and every, invariably, that spirit goes. It has to go because it's a spirit that really does affect many, many people. And it's a spirit that usually comes in when a person is just a small child. After we've called that spirit out of heaviness, then we call out the rejection, and then we call out, of course, the other spirits that fall under that category of a, of a spirit of heaviness. The next ruling spirit is jealousy. We call that spirit out, and then we call out all the other spirits under that, particularly bitterness and revenge and, and spirit of control. That Jezebel spirit, that falls right under that category. And many people have anger today and rage and even leads into murder. Particularly, we call out a spirit of murder to people that have had any type of an abortion, either the, uh, the, the father or the mother of that aborted child, because that spirit of murder actually will come upon that person when that takes place. So we always call out that spirit, and, and there's usually always a manifestation. Once we finish that category, then we go to the stronghold spirit of Antichrist. Now, this spirit of Antichrist is a, is a spirit that is plaguing many people also today, particularly the spirits under that of doubt and rebellion and witchcraft. And so that's called out. Once we finish that category, then we go to poverty. And we didn't realize that poverty was such of a major spirit until about uh, two years ago. But as we were praying for a man that had become a millionaire, and he had lost everything he had and had reduced himself to become an, uh, began waiting on tables. And it just seems like everything that he touched would go right through his fingertips. But as we call out a spirit of poverty that was upon him, a great manifestation took place. And this man was set free. And God is today doing a mighty work in his life. So that is a major spirit, a spirit of poverty. The next category has to do with bondage. Bondage is a spirit that keeps people from doing what God has called them to do. And, of course, we call out that strong man first, and after that, then we hit the hindering spirit. And a hindering spirit is a spirit that can keep a person from, from actually receiving the call of God upon their life. It can keep them from going to church. It can keep them from reading the Bible. It can, it can stop them in their prayer life. So that is a, it's a major spirit, a hindering spirit, and we call that out. And then, of course, we go into the other spirits of addiction, which has to do with alcoholism, drug addiction. It has to do with gluttony. Uh, any type of greed. So these spirits uh, are also uh, major spirits in a person's life. The next stronghold spirit is infirmity. And we find that many people receive a tremendous healing after we have prayed for them. We've had people that have been healed from all types of infirmities, of sugar diabetes, of arthritis, of uh, migraine headaches. There's been uh, infirmities of uh, heart disease that people have been healed from, and almost every disease known to mankind today has to do with an infirmity, and that is a spirit. And so when we call out the stronghold spirit of infirmity, we've had many of them call out, says, I have been assigned to, to, to kill this person, and that's why I'm here. But in the name of Jesus, these spirits have to go, and these people's lives are set free. After we finish that category, and then we call out a lying spirit, a spirit of lying, and, of course, this is a deceitful spirit. A spirit of profanity comes under that. And many, many people, particularly even Christian people, we find have this particular spirit that probably entered them when they were just a small child. After that, we call out a spirit of whoredom. Whoredom is another major spirit, and it's a stronghold. As we call that spirit out, then, of course, we find many people, particularly in the Christian uh, Christianity today, have a spirit of either religious spirit or a spirit of legalism. And uh, we call those out as well as other spirits of uh, emotional weakness and fornication and that type of thing. The last grouping has to do with perversion. Perversion is a stronghold. And, of course, it has other spirits under that called lust. 
pornography and masturbation and sensual spirits and sensual thoughts. And another area that is under perversion is even word twisting, which uh, might surprise a lot of people, but there's many people that twist the word and to make it fit to their likeness, which is, of course, is not scriptural. Now, once we've completed the list of all the strongholds and called out all the spirits under the strongholds, then I even call out any spirit of darkness that would be in that person that has not been called out, I command it to leave in Jesus' mighty name. And many times again, we'll even have more spirits that will leave those people. You know, as we pray deliverance for these people, <clears throat> there are many dozens of spirits that leave these people through these deliverance sessions. And their life is never the same. The t hour to two hours it takes to pray for deliverance for these people, they can, they can never realize the difference in their lives until they've gone through it. But I can tell you in verbally, they leave that place with holy laughter. They'll leave with the glory of God upon them. But before we actually let them go, we lay hands on them and we pray the Holy Spirit into them. We ask the Holy Spirit to come upon them. We anoint them with oil. We'll fulfill every vacancy, every, every cavity in their life. We fill it with the Holy Ghost. And we speak forth the gifts of the Spirit upon these people. We speak the fruits of the Spirit upon them. And we cover them with the blood of Jesus. And we cover their homes, their families, their workplace with the blood. We dispatch warring angels to go before them to help them fight their battles from this day forward. And they go forth out of there with total victory. Now, before they leave, we give them a handout because we also understand that the Bible says when spirits leave a person, they go into dry places seeking rest. And when they can't find rest, they say, let's go back into the house that we came from. And if they find it clean and garnished, then they said, then they'll get seven friends of ours that are more wicked than they are, and then they'll try to go back in. So we give them a little bit of teaching before they leave. We give them a little handout on how to keep their deliverance. Gives them a lot of scriptures, a lot of things that they need to stay in the Word and uh, stay with the Word. We give them information that they need to spend uh, their uh, times in church, uh, particularly when the church doors are open, they need to be there. And so that they can get and receive the Holy Ghost as, as they go th to these services. Also, they need to have private time in reading the Word. And they need to develop a good, strong Christian uh, fellowship with people that are also on fire for the Lord. These are vital areas in their life that they need to, need to have so that they can keep the enemy from trying to come back. Because he will try to come back. And particularly if a person that maybe has had a spirit of rejection, these spirits will not come back waving a red flag and saying, here we come back, we're trying to get back in. No, they work through people. If a person has had a spirit of rejection, there would be uh, possibly, even before the day is up, that spirit will be working through a close friend, a spouse, a child, or somebody in the family, and trying to put rejection upon that person before they even get home from the deliverance. We've seen it happen many, many times. But the beautiful thing about it, that spirit of rejection is no longer in them. And they don't have to react the way that they did before. But they come forth as a victorious and as a mighty warrior. And they recognize that that's a spirit. And they just take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And it bounces right off their armor. But we just want them to know that there will be times of temptation. There will be times when, when these spirits will try to come back. And we explain a lot of this in the fourth session on how Satan works and how he tries to work in our thought life. But anyway, we give them as much information as we can. We realize that by just going through deliverance that there are, uh, they're in a frame of mind to where they're not really ready to receive a whole lot of things because most of the time they're, they're very tired. Their body is physically worn out. And we tell them that they're going to get a good night's rest that night, and they normally do because they're totally physically tired because it is a strain on the body basically to go through deliverance. But my, what a wonderful feeling. And we give God all the praise and all the glory because of what he's doing in this ministry and what he's doing in people's lives. And, and Christian brother and sister, you need to have deliverance if you've never been through one because I can tell you there's things that we pick up all through our background, through our life and our environment as we grow up that just we just pick it up and we need to get rid of all, all of the baggage that we've been carrying around. And we can through deliverance and uh, it's, it's a beautiful ministry. This is the end of session three, the deliverance session.